Welcome to this video on drone technology and its future. In this video, we will be looking in detail about the types of drone, the application, the functionality, and what the future holds for this technology. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world, so please do subscribe to our channel. Thanks to the advancement in lithium-ion battery technology and the advancement in rigid, lightweight materials, new airborne devices have started to appear, at least at the micro level. Levitation devices have featured regularly in nearly all movies that depict the future. From Back to the Future to The Terminator, from Oblivion to Riddick, the concept of agile and portable airborne transport has inspired science fiction writers for decades. Many of these devices shown in the movies use a hovering mechanism as it allows for the most versatility in flight dynamics. In the past five years, quadcopter drones have appeared in the market and sell like hotcakes particularly during the festive season. Their development has been possible because of progress in strong lightweight materials, lightweight batteries, and electronics for controlling stabilization of flight. To put things into perspective, carbon fiber composites available today that weigh only 25 grams per meter square and that can be used for making wings are lighter than A4 printer paper. The printer paper weighs 80 grams per meter square and for this reason carbon fiber composites have been used in Solar Impulse 2 the solar only powered aircraft. A quadcopter is inherently unstable in terms of flight dynamics. This unstable behavior gives it high agility, including the ability to flip itself in the shortest space envelope. To control a quadcopter manually is impossible. Its flight is only possible because of high performance processor and onboard electronics that determine how much energy has to be released to each motor for stabilization. This gives us a clue to why helicopters evolved with a single rotor rather than four rotors. It has to be remembered that in a monocopter, the blades can change the pitch and can have a tilt mechanism that make them very mechanically complex. In a quadcopter, the change of direction is achieved by spinning motors at different speeds and it is only because of modern powerful electronics that are available cheaply that we can control the quadcopters today. The question therefore is, can this technology be scaled up to transport goods or humans in the future? Before a speculative leap into the future is made, a better starting point would be the observation of energy system of an existing micro drone to gain insight. The specifications of a top selling drone in the market are as follows. Weight is equal to 599 grams. Dimensions are 20 by 20 by 13 centimeters approximately. The drone comes with two 750 milliamp hour batteries that are rated at 3.7 volt and weigh about 34 grams. This equates to a pack density of 163 watt hours per kg. Bear in mind that this micro drone battery energy density is slightly higher than the energy density of a Tesla battery pack, which is about 141 watt hours per kg. The four motors on the drone are rated at 10 watts and consume the total energy in the battery pack in just about eight minutes or 480 seconds. It should be noted that the battery pack itself is simply an assembly of two batteries. It doesn't have any cooling or charge balancing system that are feature of large battery packs and therefore this battery pack has a comparatively higher energy density. Scaling up would mean a lower energy density of the battery pack. Furthermore, scaling up the geometry does not increase the energy consumption linearly. When any flying object is scaled up, the lift force increases by a square power because it is dependent upon the area, but the weight increases cubically as it is dependent upon the volume. 
This means that the energy required per unit mass to fly the object increases as the geometry scales up. Hovering mechanism with four rotors is less energy efficient compared to a single large rotor. And this reiterates the higher energy requirements for any quadcopter drone. So it can be safely said that quadcopters cannot replace the helicopter in the near future. Despite their higher energy requirements, are quadcopters being considered for transporting humans? Let's explore that. It is interesting to note that a human-powered quadcopter has been fabricated and has achieved flight. Students from Maryland University were able to design a 36 kg quadcopter that was able to achieve flight for several seconds. A trained cyclist can generate up to 250 watts for periods longer than a minute. The video shows that with this power, hovering is possible. Very good athletes can maintain that power output for a period of several minutes. And with a power of around 250 watts, not only the person was being lifted, as shown in the video, but also the weight of the quadcopter. Using the data from this human-powered quadcopter, it can be easily ascertained that 500 watts would be sufficient energy for lifting up a person of an average weight with a quadcopter that can weigh around 72 kilos. Of course, putting aside the human effort and replacing that with machine power means motors, wires, and batteries, which means added weight. And there lies the most fundamental design quandary. More power, more weight, and more weight means less lift. So far, the most serious effort in scaling up a quadcopter has come from Eheng. The Chinese company has recently released the Eheng 184, a twin-bladed quadcopter that can hover with 100 kg of payload for about two hours. Although the effort should be lauded, but there are several questions regarding the safety and performance, especially when it's designed to transport humans. This drone is autopiloted the user only keys in the destination and selects the route if desired. It should be noted that with driverless cars, there is more a human issue than a technological one. It is mentally challenging for humans to relinquish control in a fast moving vehicle. It will be a bigger leap of faith in an automated flying machine. Nonetheless, it is an effort in the right direction. Recently, an 18-rotor drone has been developed in Germany that is believed to be the world's safest helicopter. The inventor claims that the multi-rotor aircraft is safe by virtue of its high redundancy of the rotors. With big companies like Amazon and Google putting their weight behind drone technology, advancement can be made leaps and bounds. At present, both the capital and operational costs may not be low but they are bound to come down. Leaving aside the scaling up, drones still have a future in their small size and micro size. They can be utilized for several applications and can be evolved for several more. Few of the applications are mentioned here. Number one, they can be used for military reconnaissance. Number two, they can be used for any kind of aerial surveillance and even used by farmers to find missing animals. Number three, they can be used for providing relief and dropping food, medicine, and first aid kits in hard to reach areas. And lastly, they can be used for locating survivors inside buildings on fire. So now let's have a look at drone types and their future designs. Although the term drone has become synonymous with quadcopters with all electrical components that use motors instead of engines, however, there are other types that should be taken into consideration, particularly when trying to predict the future of this technology. It should be understood that there is no one-size-fits-all type of drone. The shape of drone will depend upon the application. Let's look at three of the most popular types of drones in detail. They are namely quadcopters, monocopters, and fixed-wing drones. 
quadcopter drone, as we have looked earlier, are mechanically simple but require more complex electronic stabilization mechanism, whereas monocopters are mechanically more complex. In a monocopter, the blades need to have variable pitch and tilting mechanism for maneuvering. They are more efficient than a quadcopter and can utilize autorotation in case of a breakdown. Lastly, the fixed wing type of drone is the most efficient in terms of lift to weight ratio and therefore can cover the longest distance. Fixed wing drones are stable in flight but cannot hover and are not as agile. And therefore for long duration and long distance surveillance, fixed wing drones are going to be utilized in the future, particularly in open areas. Quadcopter drones will be utilized for smaller distances in urban environment, whereas monocopters will be the in-between choice. Electric motors can be the propulsion source in all three types of drones. One advantage of this is that it can benefit from solar panels integrated in the body or in the fuselage. Solar impulse aircrafts are example of this as well as other unmanned airborne vehicles like Project Helios. In the movie Interstellar that is set in the future, the character of Miller captures a drone that has been flying for several years. It is a fixed wing drone with solar panels on its wings. Most batteries available in the market have reached energy density range of 150 to 250 watt hour per kg. The energy density of batteries can cross 400 watt hour per kg mark in the next five years, which would mean an increase in electric aviation. Electric aviation would also usher in more computerized flight control systems, including pilotless flights. And with this, the video on drone technology and its future is concluded. If you learned from it, please do like it and subscribe to the channel. We would be also giving out free vouchers for our online courses, so make sure you are subscribed. This way you will be notified the earliest as the vouchers go quickly. Thank you for your attention.